Othel Ernest Johnson was born on an unknown date around what I presume to be 1915. He was born to parents Mr. and Mrs. Johnson. I'm unsure of his mother's name, at least at the beginning of this, before I was able to do my own research. The only source about Othel is on Namus, and even that does not have very much information. His family all seem to have been located in the New Mexico area. An article talks about his relatives having been in Alamogordo, Bellin, and Roswell. The only site, like I stated before, that lists him as missing is Namus. There is no profile for him on Doe Network or The Charlie Project, and a thread about him on Web's, Web Sleuths is very scant. On Namus, it is stated that the last date of contact was January 1st, 1956, from Bellin, New Mexico. He was 40 years old at the time, and listed as white, 6 feet tall, 150 to 165 pounds, with dark hair and brown eyes. One article that is attached to his name as profile stated that he was not heavy and weighed about 185 pounds. There have been 24 exclusions from his case, a majority of them from Virginia, with a few from Ohio and Pennsylvania. Othol is stated to have lived in Gran Covera, New Mexico at some point in the past, and before World War II, lived and worked in Bisbee, Arizona. He moved to Bisbee, working for a mining company. Later, he moved to Fresno, California, then returned to New Mexico after that unknown period of time. He had worked for the city of Bellin, New Mexico, and worked normally on machinery or as a welder. The longer of the two articles attached on Namus states that Othel went missing not long after having gotten divorced, though it does not state who his former spouse was. His parents lived at 610 North Virginia in Roswell, New Mexico, and the two articles stated that Othel's mother was sick. The long article also states that he had been missing for five years and would have only been 41 or 42 by the time it was written. I'm actually unsure of when he exactly went missing then, since it seems that the timeline is a little off, and Namus did not list the dates that these articles were written. The only picture of Othel is stated to have actually been taken eight years before the longer article was written, though it was a good capture of his likeness, as it said. I and another person noticed that he had some sort of oddity with his eyes, though it's unsure if this is just an error with the picture or if perhaps he was cockeyed. <clears throat> other people have also noticed that the timeline to Othel going missing is just a little odd, though if we go by what the article said and then some information I found later. Either way, it does seem that he went missing in the 50s. The main article, though, states that there was a rumor going around that a man that fit Othel's description was in a car accident and died and was buried in Gran Cavera, New Mexico. But, as it's quoted as saying, nothing definite has been ascertained on this story. There is no mention of what cemetery he was buried in exactly, and I am unsure of the cemetery's name. There isn't a profile for him on Find a Grave, though I did do some research on the cemeteries close to the Gran Cavera area. Keep in mind, I am not from New Mexico, so I'm just a keyboard warrior trying to do some sort of work. Thanks to Google Maps, I was able to see that the Clonch Cemetery is close by, only about 14 miles and a 14-minute ride. There are 105 graves there, at least listed on Find a Grave, though I did not see any profiles for unknown persons. It is claimed, though, to only be 
well, it is claimed to be 95% photographed. So there could very well be more graves that are not actually put in the system. And the reason why I point that out is, is because I have gone what I like to call grave walking in the past. And there have been times where I've taken pictures of graves for people and their family members that don't have photographs. And I have taken photographs of graves that actually weren't put into the the find a grave system. So I, I'm just trying to uh, illustrate the image that sometimes there are still more people who aren't essentially claimed online or they have their graves posted online. The other close cemetery is White Lake Cemetery, which is only five miles and according to Google Maps, somehow a 16 minute drive. Once again, I don't live over there, so I don't know what the terrain is like, but it has 133 graves and it is claimed to be 92% photographed. Once again, there doesn't seem to be any unknown graves buried there, or at least posted online. Another cemetery is close by called Pinion Cemetery in Mountain Air, New Mexico. Google Maps couldn't seem to fathom that cemetery, though it is listed and it has pictures of it on Find a Grave. It's a small site, but there are actually a few unknown unmarked graves in the area and it is claimed to be 100% photographed. Unknown Grave 1 does not have any sort of information to them at all. The profile states that they are buried next to Jame or Jamie Jubal Robinson, who died in 1932. Unknown Grave 2 is stated to be south of Grave 1. Unknown Grave 3 has almost no indicator at all, where at least the other two seem to have had their paper information scrubbed from time. At least that is pretty much what it said on Find a Grave. It states on the profile that the structure is dead center of the cemetery. Grave 3, that is. Unknown Grave 4 is northeast to the grave of Vita Cooper Spangler, who died in 1979. The profile states that there may have been another unmarked grave next to it, though there was no physical indicator of that at all, other than a small dirt hill. Pinion Cemetery as a whole is a small and older grave site. I'm unsure if it's a family burial area, though I think that it could be a possibility, or might have been one in the past. The oldest grave is that of Mary Ellen Gibbons Story, who lived from January 17, 1861 to February 22, 1928. The latest one is that of Pedro Molina Aceves, who lived from 1937 to Valentine's Day 2011. I feel like this span of time makes the potential that Othol was buried here as an unknown grave very possible. On Web Sleuths, it's stated that Othol was born on October 7th, 1915 in Texas. I know that at the beginning of this, I stated that he was born at an unknown date, but I really couldn't find many sources really on Othel at all, vital statistically. <sighs> there is a lead on Ancestry, though, that does seem to confirm this, though it says that Othel was born in 1914, which to me isn't really a big deal one year or the other. Interestingly, though, it is claimed that he died in 1962, though this is probably when he was considered legally dead. It also states that he was born in Emory, Texas. The lead on Ancestry claims that his parents were John Parker Johnny Johnson, who lived from 1891 to 1967, and Margaret Frances Russell, who lived from 1895 to 1956. Othel's former wife was named Nancy Virginia Johnson, who lived from 1916 to 1988. 
There is very little information to be found all sides around on Family Search. I found a census record from 1940, which lists Othol and his family at the time. Othol was the head of household and 25 years old at the time, which would confirm the 1915 birth date. The record was taken in Socorro County, New Mexico. Othol is listed as having been born in Texas, white, male, did not attend college, with his highest grade of school being completed having been 8th grade. Though the document is a bit blurry, it seems that he lived on a farm, working as a farmer in Torrance County. It should be noted that Guevara is in Torrance County. The record shows Othel's name as Johnson E.O., so I'm a little unsure if they listed his middle name first and if we potentially have his name wrong. Though, when I tried to search his name that way on Doe Network, he still didn't pop up. Othel lived with his wife at the time, Nancy Virginia, and this is in the 1940 census. She was born in Arkansas was 22 years old at the time, and it seems that she completed high school as her highest education is listed as age four, though I'm not sure and I'm probably wrong. They also lived with their son, Wilburn, who was four years old at the time, and Othel's parents, John P. and Maggie, who were 50 and 46 years old. John P.'s highest education was 6th grade, and Maggie's was 8th. They were both born in Texas. Wilburn was the first one to have been born in New Mexico. John P. is listed as having been a farmhand on his, farm, on his son's farm. Despite the best of my research efforts, I could not find any sort of marriage or divorce records for Othel and his ex-wife Nancy. I assume that this is due to state laws that prevent such information being public. Despite there being the info that Othol had two children, I was only able to find information on their first, Wilburn, though it seems that through Find a Grave I was able to find his sister's name, though information on her is essentially non-existent, and honestly I just don't want to intrude on a potentially living person. There is a profile on Find a Grave for Wilburn, who was born Wilburn Jean Johnson, on April 26, 1936. The profile does not state where he was born, but we know from the census record that he was born in New Mexico. The obituary, though, for him reads that <clears throat> Wilburn Jean Johnson, age 82, died on Thursday, July 19th, 2018 of Alzheimer's disease, surrounded by family at Poets Walk, an assisted living facility in Fredericksburg, Virginia. He was born in Gran Quivera, New Mexico, to Othel Ernest and Nancy Virginia Johnson on April 26th, 1936. Wilburn was the oldest of two children. Interestingly, it does state that Wilburn's, Wilburn was preceded in death by his mother, Nancy Johnson Y. Shirley. <clears throat> Though it does not state anything about his father in the preceding death orders or pretty much anywhere else. Though I do understand that essentially he grew up without his father. Strangely, I feel like the hardest person to find any sort of information on is actually Othel's ex-wife, Nancy. Her name on Find a Grave lists her as Nancy Virginia Johnson Y. Shirley. She was born on December 23, 1916 in Arkansas. A majority of her siblings were born in the same state also, though most don't state the town they were born in. Interestingly, a few of her family members were buried in White Lake Cemetery, New Mexico, which is one of the cemeteries I was talking about before. After divorcing Othel, Nancy married another man named Charles Y. Shirley in 1956. It appears that they did not have any children together, 
as Nancy was 40 years old at the time and Charles 34, he having been born in 1921. The couple were married until Nancy's death on December 11, 1988. She passed away in Roswell and was buried at Memory Lawn Memorial Park in Roswell, New Mexico. Charles R. Y. Churley, Nancy's second husband, was born on March 6, 1921 in West Virginia. He passed away on April 25, 2003 in Roswell, New Mexico. He is buried with his wife. Beyond that, there is no more information to be had. I searched the best I could, but there really wasn't anything out there, and I didn't really want to pay for an ancestry membership. Personally, I have no idea what happened to Othel, and my intuition tells me nothing. Just looking at the details and thinking of the facts, I can only assume that Othel was one of the people who were buried in the unmarked graves around Cavera. It may seem odd that people would not know where he was if he disappeared from the area he was local to, but we must remember the graves in Pinion Cemetery lost their information due to the passage of time. It seems that, originally, all those people were known when buried, but due to the paper not lasting very long in the elements, their info is now lost. It does beg the question, though, of how Nancy met her second husband, and what type of relationship Othel had with those around him. If he essentially stayed in the same area near the end of his life, how could he have died and no one would have known? Personally, I honestly just don't know. I wonder if Nancy and Othel broke up on good terms, perhaps just growing apart over time. It's pretty interesting to me that Othel would have disappeared around, I guess, 1956 or 55, and his ex-wife got remarried, I guess, that same time period he disappeared. <clears throat> I think one other interesting tidbit is how Othel's son died of Alzheimer's. This makes me wonder if this was something well known or known in the family and perhaps maybe Othel was predisposed to it. Even though a person does not have to have a family history of the disease to be diagnosed with it, those that have had one member of their family may be more predisposed. Of course, without knowing the family's background story, this is all just speculative. I do wish that this case m was more well-known and distributed, for the lack of a better word, on other websites. Interestingly, Othel's case was only created on NamUs in 2016, which is relatively new for a case so old. In some ways, it kind of reminds me of Jim Sullivan's case, where he was last known to have been seen in New Mexico and was just never seen again. Sullivan's case is still not listed on NamUs, which makes solving it even harder. Once again, I think that this is just another unsolvable case due to the passage of time. There were not any John Doe's listed on NamUs from 1875 to 1980, which is over a hundred years, which makes me think that Othel may have been buried in one of those unmarked graves. <laughs>